Hello, everyone, and welcome to number episode number 84 of the Friday Nightmares podcast. Yes, we are finally back after a nice month break slash hiatus, which I think we needed just because 2023 is beating us down. But I am one half of your hosting team this evening, Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Swartz Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. Fully vaxxed, boosted, and waxed, and ready to climax, and if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the glorious beard, a.k.a. Mother of Cats, a.k.a. The man with the humongous <clears throat> ego, a.k.a. Scott Housen, a.k.a. Scotty Too Hottie, a.k.a. Spanky. And with me, as always, is... Have we met? <laughs> I feel like you remind me of somebody that I used to know. Hmm. Somebody that I used to know. You know the song? I do. You, oh, you have Shocking, a pop call right? to reference that you know. Heather Powell coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. And I was very excited to record again. I will be honest. I have missed it. Me too. Um, I feel energized. So energized that Scotty and I have a very special surprise towards the end of this episode. And um, we're ripping off another podcast who, well, who ripped us off enough. So I feel like it's only fair that we uh, return the favor. Exactly. What would you say? Right? Yeah, 100%. Um, Scotty has relocated to the basement and his background is pretty incredible. You might, you should probably share it if you feel comfortable to our yeah, page. Was, it looks good. Yeah, I'll share it once I'm fully finished because I still got a lot. I got to hang up and everything. But uh, yep, uh, from since the last time we recorded, obviously we talked about it on the show, but Erica and the boys moved in and uh, Scotty I, had sex for the first time. He's really excited yes, about first it. First time. It was great. <laughs> I have to tell the world about it now. Uh, what did Erica uh, did Erica enjoy that thirty seconds? Was it was it all she uh, expected and more? <laughs> I think after the maybe after the first time she did. I, you know, I had to get in the groove of things. Yeah, the forty year old version it up. Remember at the end of that movie, Steve Carell has sex and she's like, Yeah, you wanna you wanna do that again? <laughs> because <laughs> we all know the first time ever is usually pretty quick for gentlemen. So yeah. I'm glad that Eric is so patient and let you get into the group of it. <laughs> She's a good woman right there, right? Oh, hundred percent. But yeah. So, you know, my, uh, my recording station was in the old uh, fish room, as I like to call it. Cause there was a lot of like uh, cartoon fish painted on the walls from what the person that lived in this house before I did. And I never did anything with the room. So we repainted it and gave it to Connor, the older, uh, older boy and uh, Jaden got his room so they're both enjoying just having their own rooms and just kind of enjoying playing video games and just hanging out so I relocated back down to the basement I think we were yeah the first two episodes were recorded right in this area that I'm in right now and uh, Aww, glory days right but there's been a lot a lot of changes but a lot of mm -hmm. good changes a lot of purging of old crap in this house and holy mm -hmm. crap i actually actually have a lot of space now it's like it's kind of nice like I, did you finally no... get rid of all those demons did you have to call in shay in oh no i wanted to keep the demons <laughs> they, they make life exciting <laughs> was uh, it the cat was it one of the kids was it a poltergeist who knows we moved that thing yeah, we <laughs> keeps just, it we spicy it. <laughs> we just it's part of the family now <laughs> right well, I'm glad that you've settled in so nicely, and um, I'm really glad that yours and Erica's relationship didn't end over a movie that I oh, God, kind of forced did. the two of you to watch. I really wanted her to watch the second one, but then I realized that she may not want to live with you anymore. So Yeah, I think she um, stopped watching movies with me at that point. Right, and and she does like horror movies. You have managed to find yourself a partner who... You know, some people pretend to like horror movies, and that's fine. Like, that's fine. Right. If you're in a casual horror movie viewer, no problem, right? But Erica actually likes a variety of horror films, and I would hate for you to lose <laughs> that compare. Besides other things she brings to the table. <laughs> right. Horror movie liking. I really don't want her to listen to this and be like, so Heather thinks I should be with you because I like a variety of horror movies. Yeah, that's it, Erica. That's literally all I think you bring to the relationship. 
that's it. Nothing else. Just a, just a variety of horror films. Um, so I'm very excited to talk about that later. But, you know, even for a month of being off, we, we I tried to watch a variety of Netflix VOD. Prime has still been like, I don't know, drier than drier than anything. I was going to say drier than my vagina, but that's not true. So I... <laughs> My that's vagina is getting more, way more action than Prime is. Um, and that's not saying much because Prime has just been – Prime Video, and, ugh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with them this year. Uh, but Tubi, I think we got some Tubi stuff. Yep, we got, got some a lot Shuddy. of Tubi. And uh, I think only one theater release, I think. Oh, yeah. I you, think the last one. Uh, oh, no, the, the second one. Yeah, the second one was in some select theaters. Yeah, I've only watched two. one of those two so far. Uh, you may not need to watch the other one. I had a feeling. Yeah, I'll get to that. So why don't we we dive in? Because, you know, I know people have been chomping at the bit to hear what you and I have to say about 2023 horror films. Because we are the experts, you know, like. Oh, obviously. <laughs> like, flip. did you know there's only podcasts like um, <clears throat> uh, Dummies of Horror? that have like watched like i don't even think tim's even broke a hundred movies like how can you call yourself a podcaster Ooh. like honestly i mean to be fair i haven't broke a hundred yet i know i'm just trying to be funny <laughs> i think i'm the only one out of all of you that have broke let's see what am i at today let me just take a little a little quinky dink look back 123 um pretty pretty good i would say for the year we've had and looking back i definitely have a solid top 10 if i were to stop watching movies today where scott and i do differ i don't think he feels as confident in his top 10 list right now i do i i there's enough films i liked enough because well let's know we well know you're uh, the word of 2023 was gaslit and heather <laughs> has been gaslit by 2023 but we'll start off with this first one it is an aussie film so Ozzy, oi, 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 It's for you, Tim and Daniel. Um, run, rabbit, run. This is a hundred-minute runtime. Sarah is a fertility doctor with a firm understanding of the cycle of life when she is forced to make sense of an increasingly strange behavior of her young daughter, Mia. She must challenge her own beliefs and confront a ghost from her past. As always, I like to talk about some of our horror podcaster friends that have watched the film. Tim Davis has given this a three-star review. The lovely Kate has given this a three-star review. And Mr. Matt Wood has given this two and a half. And I would say that's pretty fucking fair. Um, This is, you know, like the Babadook, but not as good. (laughs) Gotcha. Okay. Like someone watched the Babadook and they were like, I want to do that. Only my own way. I I did find it interesting. I did find that the runtime went by smooth enough. I I was not surprised. Halfway through the film, I kind of figured out what happened. Um, But if you have Netflix and you enjoy a good story-based mother-child type of horror film, I I think you will enjoy this. I think for a free watch on Netflix, if Netflix is a streaming service that you have, I think it's enjoyable enough. Would I say run out and watch it to build your top 10? No. But if you're looking for something that maybe a little bit of mystery, you know, a little bit of relationship building, you know, sometimes I don't know. I don't just watch horror movies to, to stock my top 10. I watch horror movies because I enjoy horror movies. So you know, I think if that's the case and you got the netty, it's it's worth your time. And it's available on Netflix in Canada and the United States and Australia, apparently, because Tim Davis watched it. So and probably Britain because Kate and Matt watched it. So if you're in any of those areas in the UK or Australia, which Scott, I know it's been a while, but did you know I've been to the UK? <laughs> wow. <laughs> we just come back and I'm already quitting. Where do I go from here? <laughs> um, I would say check it out. So, uh, Scott, you haven't seen it yet, have you? No, and uh, unless a good friend puts it on their Plex, I probably won't because uh, it seems like uh, my Netflix is down now too. Because uh, I will say I was uh, sharing or I was being lent the password from my ex-wife, and I think it got canceled due to the whole new Netflix thing of charging yeah. you have extra accounts. Yeah. Yeah. So I lost it, and honestly, I don't miss it. There's not yeah. been much on Netflix that I care to resubscribe lately. So I, 
if I like if someone puts it on uh, Plex for me at some point, I'll watch it. I'm sure it's already on Plex. I just haven't looked, but that'll be also going forward yeah. with Netflix stuff. I'll have to see if I can find it on Plex because yeah, I just don't care to resubscribe to Netflix. If I really thought you should see it, I would talk to our good friend and tell them to put it on and then tell you to watch it. Okay, yeah. Like if I, I thought that it was something because I I have paid to be that ad on account to someone else's account, so I will have Netflix for the for going forward um so i'll keep you in the loop scotty don't worry <laughs> if right, i see fair. anything that i think is worth it i'll make sure you get to watch it if, if i don't that tells you that i'm like no nope. <laughs> yeah I, I totally get that and i'll say to be fair like the majority of this list is definitely you this time around uh because uh well like normal i should say but um yeah. yeah, I think I've only watched eight new 2023 films this entire time I was done, but I also attempted to watch five others. Attempted. Made it about halfway through and just never went back. So it's like, I've tried, but the, just once again, this year is just, I, this mm-hmm. year is beating me, beating me down and I just don't care to finish half these movies I've been starting lately. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But one of the ones that, uh, that I did enjoy though this year uh, is the next one on our list. And that is one of the two theatrical releases. And that is mm-hmm. the, Bla- the Blackening. We can't all die first. A group of black friends reunite for a Juneteenth weekend getaway only to find themselves trapped in a remote cabin with a twisted killer. Uh, this was like definitely a horror comedy that's very meta along the lines of like Scream and stuff where these characters know they are in a horror movie and are trying and have actually seen horror films and trying to make not dumb horror movie decisions. And it's pretty damn funny in my opinion. I I enjoyed the entire cast. I thought they uh, all worked really well together, had good chemistry um, some very funny lines, some that went over my head just because it's definitely more like the uh, black. No, if you're not part of the black community, right? Exactly. There's certain things you're not going to get. You exactly. know, we are whiteies, like super white. So exactly. And I don't put that against the movie because it's like, nope, I, I'm yeah. glad that they did something like that. Was it written for you or me? Right. Exactly. It was written for. Yeah, for but sure. I, I still had a great time with this. I watched it first and I messaged you going, you definitely need to see this. <laughs> this will probably be in your top 10. I think. You yeah, I liked it. Off. <laughs> oh, you knew. Right. And it's funny because both Tim and Daniel from Dummies for Hor- Dummies of Horror did not in- enjoy it as much as they thought they would. And I think that's fair. You know, I get it. Like. I would never fault someone for that. But there was one line. So recently I had just finished something about like dark side of the nineties. And it talked about all the black comedies that came out, like literally comedies with, with, you know, African-Americans or black people of color in them. And one of them was living single. And I loved living single. I thought that show was like really, really funny. And then friends came out, which I fucking can't stand. I hate the show. I think it's so formulatic and not funny. And anyway, um, and it talked about how like, Living single kind of got pushed by the wayside, even though it was the exact same concept as Friends, but because it was, you know, people of color, it didn't have the same popularity. And the there's a line in this where they're like, okay, what were the black stars that played on uh, that appeared on Friends, right? And they're trying, oh, like, yeah. oh, I never watched Friends, but and then finally the answer was like, wrong answer. The answer is I watched Living Sing- Living Single, not Friends, and I fucking died. Like I <laughs> died. Um, I thought it was really clever. I I thought it was pretty easy to call who the killer was. Yeah. Um, pretty early on, but I still enjoyed it quite a bit, and I thought the board game that they played was like overly offensive but in a way that you're like well this is this is obviously being like shared within this community as something funny and it was like i kind of felt like as a person on the side watching it being like oh shit this is like i learned a lot i learned a lot about humor and you know different ways that how i view interaction as a white person and then how it's viewed within the black community is different And and i found that really interesting to be honest um I thought it was fun, but I can see how it's not going to be for everybody. You know, you do also have to have some level of political knowledge, I think, and social knowledge to find this movie funny. Um, That helps. And if that's not an interest area for some people, I could see why they wouldn't find it that funny. Um, It is kind of low budget, I think. Yeah, I'd say probably medium budget. Like medium budget, would you say? Yeah. Okay. Um, you gave it the highest ranking. I'm right up there with you with four stars. Tim Davis gave it three. Matt Wood gave it two. Phil Ray gave it three. 
Um, Dave Bailey gave it three. Rob Humphreys gave it three and a half. So I think a lot of people are medium on it or lukewarm to hot, like Scott and I are hot on it. Um, So yeah, I would say if you enjoy this kind of comedy, if what we're talking about sounds like it could be for you, then give it a watch. It is silly. Like go into this knowing it's going to be silly and you kind of have to be along for that. If you don't like silly horror, then this probably isn't a film for you at a 97 runtime. It doesn't overstay. It's welcome. Um, oh, it went available... by so quick. Yeah. Like I thought it was quick. It was easy to watch. Yeah. Right. And you know, we like easy Scott and I, Oh, and just, and I'm easy as well. So it works out perfectly. Easy in easy out. Um, I have the Canadian listings here. You can let me tell if it's the same for the States. I have Amazon, Apple TV, Google Play, and Cineplex, which obviously is a Canadian that people can rent it off of. Do you have the same, or is there anything different for you? Uh, looks like Voodoo mm. uh, as well, and then to rent uh, Spectrum On Demand. Okay, cool. So a couple of options. I would say if what we describe sounds like you like would like that, a $5.99 rental, because that's what you're going to pay for this is worth it. If it, what we described doesn't sound like something that we, that you would like, skip over it. Yeah. That, that was going to say, cause yeah, I'm, I definitely recommend it, but it definitely is not going to be for everybody. Now I want to hear you do the intro to this one because I <sighs> bugged you and bugged you to watch it. And I want to hear your, your, Oh Lord, help me. How much like number Scott's number, actually Rob Humphrey's number one movie of the year, Rob, this one's for you, baby. I know how much you like this movie. Um, so we just really want to make sure we give it justice here on the Friday Nightmares podcast. <laughs> All right. So the next movie we're going to talk about is Quicksand. Uh, 86 minute runtime. The tagline is fear will drag you deeper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the synopsis is a married couple on the brink of divorce becomes trapped in quicksand while hiking through a Colombian rainforest. It's a struggle for survival as they battle the elements of the jungle and must work together in order to escape. Lord fucking help me with this movie. (laughs) Uh, God damn. (laughs) Heather told me that I needed to watch this with Erica for a 2B Tuesday night. And before I give my thoughts on the movie, I will say I think I had way more fun just watching Erica's reactions because she is very logical when it comes to horror films and she understands like you know like most horror films sometimes logic is tossed out the window but this movie frustrated her to no fucking end and she was screaming at the tv and saying heather's banned from having us watch movies again (laughs) (laughs) just like what's wrong with you heather why would you do this and she's messaging heather Like, her reactions were fucking so much better. And, than and her hate made me stronger. Oh, <laughs> and that's why I was, like, having fun with it, because I'm like, oh, this is terrible. This, uh, So my opinion is, yes, this movie is not good. It reminded me a lot of Outback from 2020, which we will have more to discuss about those two <laughs> movies in general later on. But um, the, the decisions these characters make are so mind-numbingly fucking stupid. The the whole um, the whole working together, they had no chemistry. They should never be a never have been a couple and ever 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 get back together. They are just bad 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 people that do such dumb things for, for being a survival film. Oh, the it, oh my god! All I have to say is snake fucking lasso snake lasso <laughs> what the fuck is this a goddamn cartoon movie uh. <laughs> he got robbing that i don't understand why you're upset it's my number one movie of 2023 oh this movie i was right there with erica this movie frustrated me beyond no belief but i was also going i've seen way worse so mm-hmm. this is nothing so I'm just watching mm-hmm. Erica's reactions and just laughing because I'm like, yep, you're basically saying what I'm thinking, but I'm much more calm about it. <laughs> and that's the thing, right? When you have been watching the shit the Scott and I have watched over the years, you know that you know it could be worse, but it was bad. Um, I am not someone I, I I have a soft spot for survival movies. I and and I'll be real. I was able to sit through this. It was it was fine to sit through. I wasn't like oh like this isn't what, like ends men that I wanted to like poke my eyeballs out. Like this was <laughs> tolerable. And it's just as a survival film, which are already 
always border on the line of unrealistic. This one went a nosedive into unrealistic. Um, for example, they had a snake that was poisonous in a constrictor, which I'm pretty sure doesn't exist. Um, it's either a constrictor or it's poisonous when it bites you. I'm not like I'm anyway. So that was interesting. Well, there are snakes that are constrictors are there? that are poisonous, but their poison is more paralyzation. Yeah, to like kill their victim, right? Not yes, to kill, can, like yeah, to paralyze them, and then they can suffocate them. So I felt like they, and then there was like fire ants in this that were also a threat, and. I don't know. They should have just thrown in some fucking bobcat that showed up or a jaguar or something just to add some little razzle dazzle to it. It was in the most unrealistic ending I think I've ever seen and before in my life. Um, yeah, there is no, like since we are kind of just talking about spoilers because I don't care if we spoil this movie. But, you know um, your mic's up, right? Thank you. Um, yeah. But uh, one thing that also Erica pointed out and I was laughing my ass off too because it was just so dumb was they are experienced quote unquote <laughs> hikers. And yet, when this woman gets stuck in quicksand, what is the first thing she does? Eh, eh, throwing a temper <laughs> tantrum in the quicksand, flailing her arms and kicking. And what happens when you're in quicksand when you start flailing? You sink deeper. Because, you know, an experienced hiker would fucking know that. <sighs> yeah, I'm not quite sure what hiking. Like, was she experienced hiker? Like, I'm an experienced hiker. Like, I walk around my conservation area in... In a country that doesn't have quicksand, like, is that the experienced hiker level she is? Or is right. she experienced hiker, like, because they were in, was it Colombia they were in? I can't remember Yeah, it was, now. Her, it was her home uh, home country of Colombia. Okay, yeah. So, like, oh, okay. Well, if that's her home country, she should definitely be, well, and be even, a little more savvy. <laughs> well, I mean, even still, most people know you don't freak out and flail when you are in quicksand. That just is common sense because mud will suck you in deeper. <laughs> well, yes, I would agree with you, Scotty. And, you know, I, I don't know. Rob really liked this film. And I, I like, you know what I think it is? I think Rob just doesn't choose joy. And because <laughs> he's so anti-joy... And feels the need to argue with me every time we do an episode. Like, without fail, release an episode, informs us that he's watching it, continues to berate me because I count movies that were released in the film festival circuit that were not avail available through any kind of mainstream access, I will count as a 2023 film. Like I think that's the most podcast. fucking pretentious shit that he honestly doesn't think that counts. I'm sorry, Rob. I love you to death. You are one of my favorite human beings in this entire planet. And I actually really respect your opinion, but I think that's uber pretentious. Like, <laughs> if a handful of people have access to a film, and then the following year it's picked up by someone like Shudder, or it's just released on VOD, that's to me the year it counts. Because mm -hmm. that's when majority of the people can see it, and I'm referring to a movie that people can see. And I just, he just likes to argue. So I don't know. Maybe he likes quicksand because it was a 2023. Maybe he wants to do a snake lasso. Snake lasso. Maybe he also has nightmares of being stuck with his ex-wife in quicksand. I'm not quite sure what it is. But Rob Humphreys is the only person I know that gave it higher than a three stars out of literally every single person we've known that have watched it. Yeah, I would like... give it one star. And that says something for me. Yeah, I was like, I, get, I think I, uh, you probably have it up, but I think I gave it two. You did give it a two. You're a kind person. Yeah, I was just like, was, I've, I've been saving the ones and less for some of the movies that I had watched that I had talked about last episode, like Cocaine mm, Cougar and stuff uh, like that. Cocaine Cougar. <laughs> yes. But, um, yes. But, uh, like, uh, I will give it to Rob. Like, he's doing the whole calling these 2022s instead of 2023s just because it gets a reaction out of us. And, we're yeah, people. and he does. And I, obviously, I know he. I know he, that's how that's how he feels too. That's how like, he feels, though. But at the same time, he just brings it up all the time to fuck with us because it's Rob. You know, that's not how I want Rob to fuck me. But yet he does not listen. And I don't and, know. You know. And he is my Bullet Club old buddy, so I gotta go. You know, right. I give him my love. Like I. You do. I, I you feed do. him. I I keep feeding him the fuel just because I like seeing him. Just kind of go off on it. It's He's fun. so funny. <laughs> he is really funny. Um, he is definitely one of my favorite people. So he'll listen to this and be like, oh, so you insult my teeth in my movies and then you say you're one of my favorite people. Rob, we only tease the people we like. It's true. The more I tease you, the more I like you. It's very, I very I don't like true. you. I don't even communicate to you. <laughs> 
I can attest to that. Right. Right. I can attest to that. Rob, I just adore your fluffy little bum bum. So if for some reason, you know, you agree with Rob Humphreys and you want to watch this film, it is available on the Shuddy. It is on the regular Shuddy. It is on the Amazon Prime Shuddy. It seems to also be on DirecTV and uh, AMC on Prime as well. I don't know. Uh, if you pay for Shudder and you really want to see it because you're a survivalist film completist or you really want to see people sink out quicksand for a while, check it out. But there's better survival horror films out there that you could be watching. Yeah. Oh, most definitely. Right. Uh, and the next one is... Uh, one that, yep. So I'll jump onto this one. Uh, this is a to be original uh, our good friend Brandon Orlick, uh, previously from the Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, he asked me if I could check it out because he knew I usually jumped on all the Tubi original horror films just because I find the hidden gems and tell him about it. Um, and this one is called Baby Blue, and it has a 90-minute runtime, uh, and it's a group of teens stumble across the story of a now-dead serial killer baby named Baby Blue and decide he'd be the perfect subject of a true crime vodcast. But when they start digging, they quickly discover that his murder spree never stopped. Now they are being targeted from beyond the grave. Um, interesting concept uh, for this one. Uh, kind of plays out almost like a like a low-rent uh, Freddy Krueger and the fact that he just kind of... Or actually more like uh, The Ring. Like he basically, like if someone starts uh, watching this video that he left behind on a phone and uh, once he watches the vid, once someone watches that video, he starts basically haunting these people and eventually basically taking over their bodies and possessing them to kill or kill themselves. Oh, and, ooh, that got dark. Yeah, so it's. It's got a very interesting idea, and it's actually the killer I found to be very charismatic along the lines of, like, Freddy Krueger, where he's, you know, like, mm. you know, but, like, obviously not to that level, but reminded me of, like, charisma. Right, that be Freddy careful. Has. You don't want everyone getting pissed at you, Scott. You know, I know. Some fucking 80s lovers coming at you. No but one just... is good as Robert Englund. But it gave oh, me that it gave me that vibe. But um, the story itself, though, just kind of fell a little flat, unfortunately. Like it was mm. a decent watch for a to be original, but it was uh, definitely better than a lot of the shit that I've watched. Uh, but it, <laughs> but I think I ended up giving this three out of five stars. It was if you are into just trying to check out all the to be originals, just because you're into watching all the 2023s, you can. I'd say give it a watch. It's definitely not a bad way to kill your time, but it's also like you, there's something better you could find, hopefully. Well, it's free. It's on Tubi. Exactly. And if you want to get mad that they ripped off Freddy and then you want to start talking about the remake of The Nightmare on Elm Street and how you're not over the fact that it wasn't Robert Englund that played Freddy, I'm sure there's like some kind of connection you can make to tie back <laughs> to your anger and then make a Facebook post about it. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Go to any horror group that's not a podcaster group, guaranteed you'll find friends there. And then while you're at it, say no good horror movies come out anymore while, while you're at it as well. <laughs> or nothing scares you anymore. That's my other favorite one. Wow, you as an adult aren't scared of make-believe things. Hmm. Slow clap I mean, for you. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I kind of get that, like, you want to be unnerved, scared. So, like, obviously, like, it doesn't happen a lot anymore because we are veterans of watching horror films and we've been doing it for so long that it's, you know, second, uh, second hat to us. But I will say certain movies do give me that, oh, shit, okay, that unnerved me. Like, didn't scare me, but it unnerved me. Like, hereditary I when, did. I think when people say that, they're just trying to look cool. I honestly do. I think if someone goes into a horror movie group and is like, nothing scares me at all, I want to be like, are you just watching 1980s films and franchises? And, like, do you have zero empathy? And, like, <laughs> absolutely, like, or are you a psychopath? Like, I just find it weird when you say it's it's like it's a badge of honor that you're so tough that nothing scares you. And I just, I don't know. I find yeah, those groups the... entertaining. And I want to give a quick shout out to Jay Murphy from the Kill the Cast for always going into those groups. That's the only reason I stay in those groups is to watch Jay tell people to go fuck themselves in the <laughs> nicest, funniest way possible. Are you in any groups with him and some of the shit he writes? Only in a couple of the po podcast groups. Oh. I don't see anything that he, I don't think he really. No, it's the general public those. horror groups. Honestly, that's how I met Jay and how I got into podcasting is all through him, actually. 
and fuck, he's funny. Honestly, yeah. I think these groups just for his comments because uh, they're I so love, funny. I absolutely love Jay. He is such a great person, and yeah, like I've I've avoided those Facebook groups just because they are the most generic of horror groups out there, and I just the shit that people post in them just hurt my head, so I just have to leave the groups. And sometimes they're, like, super fucking toxic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, what are you fucking trying to prove? And then I realize it's Rob Humphreys. And it's just... <laughs> a diff- I'm just kidding. It's not Rob. No, Rob has way more horror knowledge and understanding and has his opinions. And I yeah, had to definitely he can back eat up it. his opinion. Yes, he can. And I had and I sent him a message this week saying that he was right about something and I was wrong. Oh shit. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I got Rob had some this. good points. Yeah, we'll get to it. Oh boy. Um yeah, yeah. And it wasn't about the years of movie, so fuck oh, you, Rob. I think, I'm not backing down on that. I think uh, I know about it. I think I know what it well, is. You will know about it, guaranteed. So the next one we're gonna talk about is resurrected. We're not really gonna talk much about it because it's not great. So <clears throat> this is a 90 minute runtime, thank God. Um, there are no saints among the living. In the near future, the Catholic Church oh, course, boy. has learned how to resurrect people. The whole process is kept secret and follows strict rules. Only sinless believers under the age of 65 can be resurrected. The film is set on the computer of Stanley, an online church priest who becomes a priest. Like, he's not a priest at the beginning, he becomes a priest. Okay. Um, yeah. Anyway, like later in life becomes a priest, which I'm sure happens. But like, anyway, the film, oh, where are we? He is divorced and his son lives with his ex-wife so he can chat with him online only. That's not why. But anyway, Stanley's son was the first person to be resurrected after he died in a car accident that Stanley caused. Stanley sure learns, soon learns that there's a conspiracy. Get this Catholic church and conspiracy. Can you believe it, Scott? Shocker. <laughs> I know you really were like what um behind the resurrection process this is a found footage movie that's done virtually but they didn't do it well where something like missing was like really done well and used the virtual found footage piece really really well this was not done well this was very much a catholic church as a piece of shit film not wrong um but it was not great basically they resurrect people and when people come back they do shitty things so it was also a little bit a little bit of razzle dazzle with some pet cemetery in there you know oh, sprinkle yeah. a little bit of pet cemetery sprinkle a little bit of chat catholic church was being hashtag catholic church uh sprinkle a little bit of found footage that's really not done well and you have this film um i don't know if you're a found footage completist you can watch it this has a 3.0 rating uh, no one has watched in our community but me. So something tells me the 3.0 rating is from all their friends. Because <laughs> there is no way Matt Wood, Tim Davis, Daniel, Dave Z, anybody who knows anything about horror films, Rob Humphreys, would give this 3.0. There's hmm. no way. So I say skip it unless for some reason you need to watch every single found footage that's ever been created. If that's the case, it's available on Apple TV, Google Play, Vudu, Cineplex, and YouTube. And if for some reason you're a found footage completist, I would say, you know, pay whatever you want for it. If it comes to Tubi, Scott, I would want you to watch it just so you can see how ridiculous it is. Okay. Only if it comes to Tubi. All right, deal. I will do that if it's, if I see it pop up on Tubi. Partly because you support Tubi so much as well, too. So. Oh, yeah. Fucking Tubi's awesome. Yeah. This is, to me, it's it's it's... It missed the mark, in my opinion, of something that could have been really cool. And it's just, I don't even think they should have gone the found footage route. I think they should have gone a different route. But, hey, that's my thoughts. And the next one, have you seen this one? Nope. I am kind of curious to hear your thoughts because this is one that I keep seeing and been tempted to watch. All right. So this is called a Cabin Girl. Uh, insanity is insane in the membrane. Insane in the brain! Uh, When a van life influencer moves into an isolated cabin, she discovers the home has a dark history and becomes haunted by a troubled spirit. This is very, very much a low budget film where this film has its strengths is, I would say, in the character development between the main characters and some of the people that she connects with. The main actress, Rose Lane San Flapito, is excellent. She is a very, very good actress, and she's very strong in this film. And that's what helps carry it. 
Would I say that this is a movie that people should run out and go watch? Not unless you are a big fan of indie film making. You need to really appreciate the quality that goes into making an indie film because there's parts of it because it's an indie film and they don't have, you know, the biggest budget. What people sometimes mistake for bad acting or um, plot is is just the limitations within the filming. So maybe a plot sequence isn't as what you think it could be because they have limitations within their filming. I do think this film works well with what it has. And obviously Matt Wood agrees. He's given it three and a half stars. Dave Bailey's given it two and a half. So I think those are both fair. I would probably sit around two and a half to three because I think for an indie film, it does a good job of presenting a cohesive story, uh, which honestly I was surprised about at the end. I was okay. like, I was like, Oh, okay. Like it, it, it made sense at the end. But I don't think this is going to be one that a lot of people are going to run out and see. We saw a screener or a screener. is um, If you want to check it out, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it. Um, you roboted there. I don't know if it was on my end or your oh. end, so the last bit. I, OK, so I said if you wanted to check it out, um, if it's on a good friend's plex, if it's working for you, I think it's something you could watch at work and you could give me your thoughts on it. OK, well, uh, Cabin Girl is actually a Tubi original. What? It doesn't have here for Tubi in Canada. Maybe it's not available on Tubi in Canada. Oh, OK. Yep, that's a Tubi original. So, on. Perfect. So if it's on Tubi, you can watch it on Tubi. All right, perfect. Because, yeah, I, like I said, I kept uh, seeing this one and I have it on my list and was kind of curious. I didn't realize you watched it, so I'm glad to hear it was pretty decent. Did you watch the next one or no? I never even heard of this one. Uh, so this is one that I found on our good friends Plex. So this is called Walking Against the Rain. This is a 94-minute runtime. At the end of the world, the journey for humanity connection begins. Two strangers, Blair and Tommy, are navigating their way across a barren landscape in a desperate attempt to find each other. Their only form of communication being two soon-to-be-dead battery-operated radio mics with a new evil in the shape of the forsaken trapping them, tack, tracking them down. They must learn to confront loss and rediscover a trust in humanity. Hmm. The only person that has watched this is someone named David Garrett, which I do think I know from the horror community. He's given it three and a half stars. Dave Bailey wants to watch it. It is available on Tubi and Plex. This is another low budget film and it's a creature feature. And it's, I think, Lovecraftian. So you would have to watch Ooh. it to kind of confirm that because you know Lar I got the vibe it was Lovecraftian. You could confirm it. Okay. I thought this was quite a well-done film for a low-budget creature feature. I thought the creatures were actually pretty decent for it being low-budget. I thought the story was easy to follow, but it's very much one of those ap apocalypse, people surviving in the new world kind of thing. Think Walking Dead minus zombies. As If you like that kind of film this is worth your time to watch and you enjoy indie filmmaking though. I would say this probably had a little bit more budget than cabin girl. Um, if that's not your thing, I would say skip over it. It is available for free on the Tubi and the Plex and Panaflix, which I've never heard of before. Uh, but Pana, Panta fix flicks, Panta. I've never Flix? heard of that. I guess it's a new streaming service. Maybe let's be, or maybe right? a Canadian service. It's in the United States too. Oh, hmm. Yeah, right? never heard Maybe of that. it's like a Plex or like a Tubi. You know what I mean? Like it's right. another ad revenue and then you kind of, you know, you pay the premium. Tubi doesn't have a paid premium yet, does it? It's just Tubi. Nope, just Tubi. And like, yeah. I don't know how they, uh, I'm kind of curious on how that works for them. Well, probably the, you know, with the more popular the films, because we watch a lot of like horror movies, but I had like low budget and not no, known on Tubi, but I did use to I did have to use Tubi for another podcast and a well known movie that was on Tubi. Lots of commercials. So I think ah. the more well known the film, obviously the more viewership, the more commercials you're gonna come across. Okay, yeah, that right. makes sense. Okay. Right. We when you and I sometimes watch films where they're like we include a commercial, they might turn it off. So we'll include one at the beginning and one at the end. <laughs> or one in yeah, the middle. So just usually like I'll Usually I'll deal with like four uh, four commercial breaks throughout a movie, even the lower budget ones usually. Yeah, and that's not much, right? When no. you think about it, that's it's, for like... It's perfect for me to go do a bathroom break, grab something to drink, yeah. do something. Yeah, right. I, I don't mind right. it at all. Do a line, come back to it. Oh, 100%, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. 
Um, so I would say that you should watch this, Scotty. It is on Tubi, so I think you would enjoy it. Okay, perfect. I will definitely check that out then. Uh, yeah, I've never and even heard of this one. This one's yours, because I have not seen this one. I tried to watch it, and I didn't like it. So I'm excited to hear your thoughts. All right. So, yeah, the next one I also found on Tubi. It is not a Tubi original, but Tubi has it up there. Uh, and it is called Older Gods. It's a 82-minute runtime. The tagline is, Pray for Salvation. After the disappearance of his troubled friend, American Chris Rivers travels to the remote Welsh countryside to investigate what happened, leading him to a dark, apocalyptic occult. So, kind of just jumping off the back of Walking Against the Rain and how you feel that was possibly Lovecraftian. This one is definitely Lovecraftian. Um, it, yeah, it's very, uh, very simple plot with, yeah, this guy goes to this cabin and like his buddy had murdered him or not murdered, his buddy had committed suicide or was led to believe he committed suicide. And that's why he's there just to kind of investigate what the hell happened and see if it's true or not. And yeah, it just, uh, leads him deeper and deeper because he starts finding notes and just starts leading him deeper and deeper into this apocalyptic cult and like his investigation kind of brings attention to this stuff. And it's definitely a slow burn, but, uh, it's definitely, uh, it's a slow burn, but at the same time it had kept me intrigued because mm. it was very, um, very good at playing out the story of what the fuck's going to happen next. At least to me, it gave me that like detective feel to it where it's like, okay, I want to figure out what the hell this all means, what's going on here. And the more he dived into it, the more fucked up you find out some shit really is. And I thought the ending was really good. I I thought the acting was good, like nothing great. But uh, I found this to be very intriguing and definitely tickled my fancy with the Lovecraftian horror aspects of this. I definitely recommend this one if you are a fan of like slower burn Lovecraftian horror. This was a uh, in a sea of crap that 2023 is thrown at me this was definitely a nice little hidden gem awesome i'm glad to hear that i uh maybe i'll try to go back to it and watch it as you know i'm not a big lovecraft person um and maybe i was just in a cranky mood when i put it on the first time that happens well i'll um, say i this one I definitely speaks the scotty language i don't know if this would like even if you watch i think if you watched it all the way through you would have like a maybe three out of five type rating for it i think okay. i gave it i think i gave it a seven out of ten or a three and a half out of five oh well, that's fair well i will put it into consideration see how this there we year go. goes all right. <laughs> right um the next one is called craving uh this was recommended from dave bailey he uh he's given this bad boy four stars good old felissa rose is in this uh, she's not in it for long, but she is in it. Uh, it is an 85-minute runtime. Flee or face the monster inside. After a drug deal goes south, four heroin addicts barricade themselves in a cocaine bar. Sorry, in a cocaine bar. In a country bar. Well, there were people doing cocaine, cocaine in it. <laughs> well, there were people doing cocaine in this bar. As the cops close in, withdrawal sets in, and further complications or hostage situation, while a secret one of them is hiding could destroy all of them. Yes, very much. This is a movie about addiction and challenges with addiction and the horror of that. So it is very meta. Um, I enjoyed it, though. I thought that they used the setting of the bar very well. It was dark. So watching on your phone would be a challenge, Scott, but watching it at home would be fine. So don't okay. watch this on your phone. It will be too hard for you to see things. I I think that Erica may find it interesting as well. It's a lot about... It's a lot about relationships and dealing with addiction and the metaphors of that. Um, it is available on Tubi, which is why I'm saying you guys may watch that for your Tubi Tuesday, Tuesday, yep. Tubi Tuesday date night. Yep, um, it is I, I just added it to my list because I have yeah, seen seen it on there. It's interesting. It really, really is. It's an interesting film. It is very low budget, but I know that she's watched low budget stuff with you before. Oh, yeah. um, so I'm I think you guys may have an appreciation for it. Uh, it is available on Google Play as well as YouTube and Amazon. But I would say if it's on Tubi, why wouldn't you watch it on Tubi? Like, I don't know, it's a free watch on Tubi and you just got to sit through some commercials, which is no different than watching on cable television. So I right. would say check it out. If you're a Felissa Rose fan, definitely check it out. Um, she isn't in it for super long, but she's in it enough to give you context. And uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. I thought it was a, a decent film. So Nice. Again, I, you gotta like indie. You gotta like indie filmmaking for this. You know, oh if yeah, you're someone and, that doesn't, then I know you do. Like, I'm thinking more to like some of our co-podcasters. If indie is not for you, do not watch this film. 
All you're right. probably not going to enjoy it. I don't know. Tim Davis is the only one I think could go either way. Um, it depends what kind of mood he's in that day. And I don't mean that like derogatory. I literally mean no. like sometimes it depends what mood we're in that day, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's that's craving. All right, good to know. Yep, it is now added to the list, and I will definitely uh, check it out very soon here. But yeah, I'll save it for like a 2B Tuesday night. Yeah, for sure. Oh, hold on one second. I'm Because of the new setup, I, uh, I'm still trying to... Are the pussies being a problem? Not being a problem, but uh, Elizabeth was behind my computer monitor, and I felt my headphone cord being tugged on, so she was probably chewing on it. So I just pushed the computer monitor up. Yeah. Computer tower back. These pussies, huh? Oh, I know. And there's all sorts of them now because we're back to five here. But uh, anyways, uh, so the next film is one that you and I both watched. And I know Tim Davis watched it because he just talked about it on his most recent episode of Dummies of Horror. Uh, and that is The Flood. Uh, <laughs> 93 minute runtime. Uh, tagline is danger is rising. A horde of giant hungry alligators is unleashed on a group of in-transit prisoners and their guards after a massive hurricane floods Louisiana. So, you know the movie, Crawl. This is a low-rent, <laughs> low-budget, bad version of that movie. This is like the asylum version of Crawl. <laughs> yeah, this is... <laughs> Jesus Christ. The CGI... Oh. <laughs> CGI alligators is terrible. Um, the fact that most of these alligators seem to take multiple gunshots and still keep going like it didn't fucking phase them at all is also kind of a uh, what the fuck. Uh, the acting is painful. Um, <laughs> oh, man. The, uh, these characters were all just dumb, made so many dumb decisions, and were all terrible shots when they were attempting to shoot the alligators if they didn't hit them, and it, it, it uh, so many dumb choices in this movie. I you know what I liked. My favorite was the over the top racist with the Nazi tattoo on it. Where yeah, was, was his? Where was his swastika? I can't say it right. Swastika tattoo. Do you remember where it was? Was it on his like forehead or something? I think it was. <laughs> Someone said, I'll, "I'll use that as a bullseye." <laughs> it's just so fucking stupid. It was oh. honestly. <laughs> terrible this... and we were looking forward to it too yeah well our last oh, episode we talked yeah. about how like, excited we were we're like oh this could be a hidden gem but i'm like oh, uh, no no it was a hidden something all right it wasn't a gem <laughs> a, a, a hidden turd <laughs> yeah. i don't know i had a good time though watching i'll be honest if you like really cheesy sci-fi fucking fucked up you know these sharknado level stuff you'll you'll have a good time with this film like, if you go yeah. into it knowing that's what it is, I honestly, I, I was entertained. I was like, what dumb shit are they going to do now? Like, what was... dumb line are they going to deliver now? Like, I, I don't know. I kind of set the stage for that. And sometimes I like stuff like that. It, it wasn't taking itself seriously. It wasn't yeah, like quicksand like... that took itself seriously, right? Like, this movie oh, was sure. like some dumb crocodile alligator film. Right. Yeah, it was. It was just. It's. It's along the lines of you know, just a low rent shark film. You, you I, get what I, you're expecting. Honestly, asylum level film for any other good alligator film. That's yeah. the best way to describe this movie. Yeah. Um, watch it at your own caution. Know it's ridiculous. Keep your expectations low. <laughs> yep. Um, 100%. It is available on Apple, Google, Voodoo. YouTube, Microsoft Store. I don't overly recommend renting it, but if you like those kind of cheesy animal attack films, yes, it's for you. Then for yep. sure. Right? But yeah, I would not pay to rent this. No. No. Definitely not. Um, and we definitely looked like we had uh, what is it on our face? What's Egg that thing? Egg on our face. Because we were like, it looks so good! <laughs> Little did we know. Little did we know. That tells you we're so broken that we're like, anything, anything looks good. Anything. Like we're just uh, hoping. Any movie. We're, we're hoping 2023 will change. We're like, please don't, please don't 2023. You didn't mean it, right? Anyway. Is it my turn, Scott? Is uh, it my turn? Yes. Yep. Okay. I'm we sorry, both I'm saw this one. Cat. Oh, that's okay. Oh, yeah, I played with some pussy, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> do what you gotta do, yeah. Scott. Now that the computer's down um, here, Elizabeth's like, ooh, cords I can chew on. I don't blame her, right? She's like, who's that cat behind you? That is Stormy Poof. Right where's, your, where's the other cats? Uh, Greg came out, meowed at me for a second, because he just loves to sing the songs of his people. Mm, uh, actually, I, I think also he, do. 
I think that might be him all the way back on the couch right there. And then, yeah, Fluffy Butt, I'm not sure where she is yet. She was down here, but I kicked, she was using my computer chair as her bed, so I kicked her out of that, and she's probably mad at me oh, at the man. moment. Oh, man, you are totally crawling in pussy. I hope Erica knows what she set up here. Honestly, oh, I didn't know this was a pussy house now. <laughs> <laughs> it's got, uh, got all the pussy. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, no filter. Oh, like me. Hashtag no filter. <laughs> yeah, this, this is Heather's story. Oh, my God. It's just a movie about me and my daily life saying things I shouldn't say. <laughs> uh, this is an 87-minute runtime. As a number one social influencer at her high school, Anna is still discovering the advantages and drawbacks of this new status. Home alone, she's determined to gain as many followers as possible. But when the line between real and virtual gets blurry, the night becomes bloody. I enjoyed this film. Now, I like influencer movies. Let me clarify something here. I I enjoy the social media influencer characters. Very rarely do they make me annoyed. Um, I thought this young lady was fairly likable. I, I mean, Scott didn't feel that way, I guess. You didn't think she was likable? Well, I'll wait till you're done. Uh, I thought she was okay. I thought her friends were less likable than she was. I, I got that she was 17 and was getting attention. Um, and I did like, they kind of tied back to her personality changing with her parents a couple of times where she was rude to them. And they were like, excuse me, what did you say? And I think it does show how tough it is being a teenager, wanting to be accepted, and really feeling like social media is the place where she was getting the attention and the affirmation that she wanted. I thought it was good enough storytelling. I enjoyed it, um, obviously more than Scott, because Scott gave it two and a half stars. I, I would give it three. Um, one other person that we know has watched it, Tim Walker gave it one. <laughs> Tim Walker at The Real Talk. Wow. Tim Walker is very harsh on movies, too. Um, I don't know. I thought it was a good little film. I I wouldn't recommend anyone run out and watch it. I think you have to be a fan of influencer movies to go out and watch it to really enjoy it. But uh, Scotty obviously has some thoughts. So Yeah, Scotty. so you all know my opinion with social influencers and movies that are based around them. I really struggle because I just can't stand influencers and their uh, what would uh, their egos, I guess you would call it. And which makes for always in 95% of these social media influencer horror films makes the characters that you're following extremely unlikable. And add on top of that, teenager that doesn't know how to balance light, like the the social influencer life and her family, and being you know the teenager that's very angsty and like so full of like just trying to get the attention makes her even more unlikable to me. So like I just had no cares for this character whatsoever. I understood her. I liked her one friend, the one that was really close to her. Not the other one that was a bitch. But... Yeah, the one that was kind of nice, right? Yeah, yeah that I one. liked her because she was coming in with the real talk and yes. uh, trying to yes. get her attention out of the, the social media lifestyle. I see what it was going for with the message and everything. And yeah, message is fine. But I just found the movie to just be like very grating to me in a lot of ways. But mm. once again, that's because it's that social media influencer. Like I've learned to start liking them more because I, you know, just take I realize that's what the movies are supposed to be and are trying to be. But this one just did not work for me and just kind of pushed the wrong buttons. Is it because you see yourself in the social media? Like, is it because you're an influencer and you're jealous? Heather, I don't have an ego. I don't have an ego right. as an influencer. I don't Absolutely have a, not. I don't have a five minute long intro that yeah. talks about how awesome I am. Because, I mean, I am awesome, but. I don't have an ego. No, absolutely. I'm just wondering if it's because you're looking <laughs> in the mirror. <laughs> One day, maybe I'm going to come up and I'm going to call it Smoke Show. What have I done? And it's a found footage movie about Scott's <laughs> ego getting out of control. Once again, I don't have an ego just because I'm better than you and you know it. <laughs> well, that is true. We've had 83 episodes of that happening. I've learned a long time ago. I fail in comparison in every way to you everyone loves you i'm just here as the side piece but you know what the side piece is a role that i'm good at and i'm willing to continue to be in that role 
<laughs> know your limits and play within it. So you got two different views. I enjoyed it, but I do like influencer movies more than Scott does. I find I don't get annoyed by the characters as much as he does. So this is available on Tubi. It is available to rent on other streaming services as well, like Apple TV and Google and YouTube and Microsoft Store. I don't think it's worth a rental in any shape or form. I think if you really like the influencer concept, this is worth watching. But you really got to like influencer horror. If that's not something that's for you, then skip over this movie because you're probably not going to like it. Yeah. Right. And the next one so, is you. Oh, wow. You know, it's hard being the backbone. I may not get the fame. But, but you I are am the, the one. I'm the working ox. Yeah, you are the here. engine of this of this show. <laughs> oh man, I'm running on making some really bad decisions over the last couple of days with alcohol and you pot. had decisions with alcohol and pot? never. Not at, like last night, I was okay and got. It was my girlfriend's 40th birthday last night, and she was fucking trash, Scott. Like I haven't seen her that drunk in a long time. And, like, she was so drunk, she grabbed my tits a bunch of times and squeezed them, okay. like, hard. Oh, and then boy. she slapped my ass so hard, I thought she was going to bruise it. <laughs> and then she slapped Amber's ass, because I told her to stop hitting mine. And, like, she had cupcakes, and she smashed one of them into her face. And, like, the fucking icing went all down her face. Like, we're talking, it was just... Oh, boy. And she had all these mom friends out with her that I've never seen that side of her because she was doing tequila shots. She was because Anne can hold her booze, right? Like she can actually drink quite but, a bit. But it's been a long time. But it's been a long time. She had a baby, right? So she's four months out. And thank God she lives with her mom because I don't know how she was or her mom lives with her. I should say that's actually more the correct statement because that's how it is. Right. Thank God her mom's there because honestly, <laughs> she fucking she went hard last night she went real hard like i was buzzed and i was feeling good but i wasn't like <laughs> she put me to shame she was she was out there our uh our friend's daughter is 23 now she was there and she's looking at Anne like she this is how bad it was she came to me and said does Anne have a safe way home <laughs> oh wow <laughs> she said how drunk she was i'm like yeah don't worry She's uh, she has a DD. Her neighbor came, who uh, also was a friend of hers. So her neighbor took her home. But yeah, Thursday oh, night boy. of this week, I I went over to Anne's and they I got this bottle of White Claw vodka and uh, poor decisions were made with that bottle of White Claw vodka. White Claw vodka between the three of us and the joint I smoked as well. It was <laughs> I was off Friday, thank God, because yeah, I, I was just gonna say that not have been working. Like you on a weekday. <laughs> <laughs> right would not have been working so anyway both all these things were better me being drunk and hung over was better than this next movie nefarious um 98 minute runtime this was the most come to jesus christian fucking pro christian film i have seen in a long time that was Ooh, so boy. fucking boring um i don't know what pretentious bullshit they thought this movie was gonna be with mediocre actors but it was fucking horrible so speak of the devil on the day of his scheduled execution a convicted serial killer gets a psychiatric evaluation during which he claims he's a demon and further claims that before their time is over the psychiatrist will commit three murders of his own uh Sa sean patrick flannery's in this and jordan belfi um and honestly like this guy's this, the main guy's been in like saw He's been in a lot of films, but fuck, he was so... And you would recognize him if you saw him, but fuck, this movie was so boring. The 98-minute runtime, I felt like I wanted to go to the electric chair just so it would make the fucking movie end quicker. <laughs> like, it was just... I said to Scott, I'm like, whatever you do, don't fucking watch this movie. Like, it's not good. It's not. I, I There's one person that we can see that's watched it here. Um, Vic Grimms, I don't know who that real name is for that person. Even if they're a podcaster, they're just someone that follows me. They gave it two and a half stars, which is generous. Um, I don't know. It wasn't for me, man. This felt like a conversion to Christianity film. Like at the end of it, it was like, be Christian, save yourself from demons. Like that's really what it felt like with really poor, shitty dialogue between two people that didn't have the acting chops to pull it off. 
Um, this to me yeah. is a hardcore skip. Yeah, this sounds absolutely terrible. Like I, when you were telling me about it, I was like, ah, no, I am glad I just kind of skipped over. And it movie. had a budget. Like this was not a low budget film. This was not an indie movie. This was a movie that had money. And I'm like, what the fuck, guys? Like, I, I, I'm sorry, but whoever you guys casted as these two roles did not have the skill set to pull it off. Like they just didn't. And I don't know if it was the writing or the acting or both. I would need someone that's probably more knowledgeable of cinema to discuss that. But this was just not. And it didn't make me want to be Christian at the end of it. So movie, you fucking failed. Ooh, All right. Yeah. I'm going to the electric chair. Or I'm going to get drunk on vodka again and be hung over before I watch <laughs> this fucking film. Or I'm going to have Anne grab my titties and squeeze them so hard that they hurt and slap my ass to the point where it's going to be bruised. All those things sound like a more enjoyable time than this film. So... If for some reason you still want to watch it, it is available on Apple, Google, YouTube, Hoopla, Microsoft Store. I don't recommend renting it, so I don't know. If you want to watch some lackluster shitty writing and shitty acting, go ahead, but it's not great. Avoid, avoid. That means Rob's going to watch it. He's like, yep. oh, yeah, Heather. Well, at least it's a real 2023, not like your <laughs> other films. And I'm like, yeah, Rob, you go ahead. You and Quicksand, your number one film of the year. Number one film, Rob Humphrey's Quicksand. 2023. She's calling it now. Calling it now, number one film. Did you watch this next one? Uh, no. Oh, for fuck's sake, Scott. What do you do now? I know uh, what you do with busy with all those pussies. Yeah, but no, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a sequel to a movie that I found very mediocre anyway, so I just never bothered. Um, and it's a mediocre sequel. This one is a Netflix film because here on Friday Nightmares... Oh, I and like also, to get... I don't have Netflix. Oh, that's right. Here on Friday Nightmares, I like to give a variety of films from different streaming services because I am... I am a person of the people. The person of the people. That's a new thing. Not all heroes wear capes. Mm -hmm. Some of them get their bum bum squeezed. Um, They watch really shitty films and they drink too much vodka. So this movie is 124 minute runtime. And man, does it feel like 124 minute runtime. And the name of this film is Bird Box Barcelona. Have you wanted to watch blindfold people walk around Barcelona? I'm good. Ah, well, then you should definitely skip this film because that's basically <laughs> what it is. Blind people, people that are wearing blindfolds walking around instead of the United States, Barcelona. Um, I don't know. It's like exactly what it sounds. They walk around. <laughs> they walk around. It's the same concept as the original Bird Box movie, only with a little bit of a different plot. Um, there are some people that are immune to whatever the creature is and they can walk around and see the creature and they're not uh, forced to kill themselves. They don't feel motivated to. Do they actually um, kill the creature? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, and it's, mm, the main protagonist and like the protagonist and the antagonist is the same person, um, which is really, really fucking weird. Um, which I I thought that that was a very interesting development that they did. It's, I don't know, this movie's really long. Um, all I'm talking about, Scott, is how the movie's really long. It's just really long. The protagonist and the antagonist are basically the same person. And uh, I don't know, if you like the first one a lot, then I would say watch the sequel. But that would be the only reason to watch the sequel. It's 124 minutes that you will not get back. So you really, really got to like the original concept to watch this one. I'm really hoping they don't do a third. They've kind of set up to do a third. And I hope they maybe just like, we'll see how well watched this one is because I know the first one was super popular. Tim Davis gave this two stars. I think that's fair. Um, I think that's a fair rating and it is available on the Netflix. So if you were a big fan of the original bird box and you want to watch the sequel, go ahead. Otherwise I, I think you can skip this one. Okay, good to know, because, yeah, I never understood the love for Bird Box. Like, I found, I didn't hate it, but I just found it very just mediocre. And yeah. one that I never went back and never rewatched. I watched it once, yeah. and I think the memes from it are about the only good thing that came from that movie. So I never seen the reason, to make, a, ne- reason to make a sequel. Very fair. Um, but yeah, good to know that it's not something that I need to watch because I didn't want to. <laughs> um, but I will talk about this next one, which is another Tubi original because apparently I just live and promote Tubi now. Um, but this one is called The Deep Web. Sorry, can you hear me still? Okay, my cat just jumped and pulled my head set off me. <laughs> oh, no, I can hear you still. All right, things came crashing down, so kitties are on a rampage today. 
But uh, anyway, sorry for that. Uh, so yeah, this one is called The Deep Web Murder Show. It is a to be original with an 80 minute runtime. A podcaster's investigation of his sister's death leads him to a grisly website where the highest bidder decides how a chosen victim will be killed. Uh, this one is one of those others that I was talking about where I kind of like the investigation aspects of film sometimes and with a mystery that is uh, intriguing. And yeah, this you know is basically like a low rent, uh, low road, uh, low budget version of what was it, The Den, the found footage film. Oh, okay. So it's very similar to that, not found footage at all, but like that storyline kind of. And but yeah, this podcaster is just trying to find his sister who went missing. Everyone thought she was murdered, but then he finds her on a website and like starts looking for her and. It ends up getting pretty uh, interesting. I wouldn't say this is like a great film, but like once again, another one that I enjoyed my time with it. Had some very uh, fucked up moments and uh, the people that are doing this wearing some creepy ass masks. And yeah, all around, I found this to be uh, fairly entertaining uh, for especially for a Tubi watch. That's just one of the Tubi originals. I'd say give it a watch. It's I'd say it's, you know, nothing to write home about, but it's also, like, better than a lot of the crap that I had been watching. Um, and it's, you know, uh, kind of, once again, a slightly hidden gem. Because I think I gave this, let's see, yep, I gave this three out of five. Okay, okay, that's a, that's an honest rating. Um, and it's just on Tubi, you said, right? Yep. Okay. All right, well, I guess it's technically my turn, though we both watched this, right? No. Scotty, Scotty too hotty. Flex, Flex isn't working correctly on my phone Aww. lately. And that was, I've been watching, I, I tried watching it yesterday for work. Wouldn't work. Scotty. Or not yesterday, Friday. But yeah, so I, once again, one that I'm Can you watch it at home? Yes, I will be trying to watch this at home. Okay, I think Erica would dig it. Watch it with her. I think she'll okay. like it. Um, and I think it's okay for the boys to watch, by the way. Like, I like there's some violence in it, but I think Erica's kids are, I wouldn't say well, it's too intense. Like, well, I know I'll what say, they uh, watch, so yeah, they should be fine. Yeah, I'll say the youngest one won't watch it, but uh, the oldest one. Connor might. Yeah, I'll say he's watched Hellraiser and shit like that. So oh, yeah, so he'd be fine. Yeah, yeah, then he'd be fine with this. So this is called Little Bone Lodge. It's a 93-minute runtime. A mother always protects her family. During a stormy night in the Scottish Highlands, did you know I've been to Scotland? Two criminal brothers on the run seek refuge in a <laughs> an isolated farmhouse. I know you're mad. It's okay. But after taking the resident family captive, they find the household even darker. Scott's not making contact with me now. Even darker secrets of its own. <laughs> Honestly, hallelujah. Praise bone, Little Bone Lodge. Um, really enjoyed this film. I thought that the acting in it was really great. Honestly, you can get that there's something that isn't right really at the beginning, but I didn't it wasn't what I thought. I will give this film credit. I was on the theme of what it was, but the reasoning behind certain things, I was like, oh fuck. Fuck didn't see that shit coming. Um, really enjoyed the characters in this for a 93 minute runtime. They fit a lot in 93 minutes. Nice. It feels tight. It feels paced out well. I was not bored. I was entertained. This has top ten material for me. I, I, I enjoy it. it cause remember right? how I remember how I brought this up to you, saying like uh, I've been seeing this on people, uh, people talking about it on YouTube, and it's just like one of those sleeper hits that no one's really talking about. So I'm it's a glad good to film. hear. I'm glad yeah. to hear it. Yes. Yeah, I definitely think you'll dig it. We saw a screener. Well, we have access kind of to a screener, but whenever this is released, I assume it will be. I, I don't know. A shutter should pick this up. I hope they do. Um, if they don't, I, I think it's worth whatever you pay. I think anyone who enjoys horror, mystery, I, I think you'll at least enjoy this film. I don't think anyone's going to walk out and be like, oh, what a fucking piece of shit. Like, I don't think that's going to be the case. Some people may like it more than others. I really enjoyed it. Um, I definitely yeah. recommend it. That so. makes me happy to hear. So this will be probably the very next film I watch, if I, yeah. uh, at least at home. Yeah, I think it's enjoyable. Like, in a 93-minute runtime, it's not overstaying anyone's welcome. It does what it needs to do. I liked how tight it was. Like, I liked that it got to the point. Like, and everything kind of built it up on each other. And the the acting and the interaction between everybody was quite good. Awesome. All right. Yeah. So I and, really, really dug it. And I can talk about the next one. because I, I know, because you did watch it. All right. So the next one is a documentary on Shudder called Sharksploitation. 
Uh, has a 106-minute runtime tagline, a documentary that goes into the jaws of Hollywood. Uh, it's the ultimate deep dive into the world of shark cinema. Filmmakers, critics, scholars, and conservationists explore the weird, wild cinematic legacy of the of sharks on film and audiences' undying fascination with these misunderstood creatures. So when I was watching this, or when I saw it up on the on the shuddy, I was thinking, okay, are they just going to be talking just bad shark movies? But no, they talk about just sharks in general. They have like people on like just explaining like a lot about sharks and like the first shark films and the success and what that has caused on some of these sharks was like movies like Jaws and like bigger budget. But then it also does a deep dive into some of these lower budget schlocky shark films that we get nowadays. I found this to be just a very informative and very interesting uh, documentary on the on this genre. Same seas, same seas, same seas. Um, it kind of talks about how Jaws isn't the end all and be all that started the shark shark fascination. It goes back to paintings in the 1800s to talk about where fascination and lore has been developed from, which I thought was really important. Yeah. Yes, it recognizes the movement that Jaws had for the good and bad of shark films and how sharks are treated. Yep. Um, but shark isn't where it's Jaws isn't where it started. There was already mythology and concerns and sharks in movies before that. And I thought that was important that it kind of was like, yes, Jaws supersized it, but let's not forget there was all this history beforehand. Exactly. And I and I thought that that was one big thing I really took out of that documentary. Um Shudder always knocks it out of the park with documentaries. Like if you have Shudder, watch this documentary. That's, I think, the best way we can sum it up. It's worth your time. Um, it's available on all the all the types of shutters that are there. So if you're paying for Shuddy, watch it. Yep, 100%. Like, this is yep. definitely worth the watch. All right. And, okay. Here we go. <laughs> so this was the movie that I had to apologize to Rob Humphreys for. So recently, I was very excited for Insidious the Red Door because Scott and I had watched all the Insidious films yes, we some had. time ago. And I was like, oh, yeah, they're really good. Well, I rewatched them. <laughs> they're not bad. No. They're not bad. Um, but they weren't as good as I remembered. But I was like, you know what? These are still entertaining enough. I will watch Insidious Red Door. And it got dropped on our friend's Plex. I just didn't make it to the theater to go see it. And I'm like, oh, man. I'm really looking excited, really looking forward to seeing this movie. So I rushed to watch it on, I think it was like Wednesday morning. Mm. It was not a good movie. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, Patrick Wilson directed this. Um, um, I, I, I don't know if the directing was the problem as much as the writing was the problem. Uh, it, it had some, pretty laugh out loud statements that was made by Patrick Wilson, like ridiculous hmm. that were supposed to be serious, but were kind of dumb, dumb. And because it's a new watch and a new release, I'm going to be careful with what I say, but I will say that I found it quite disappointing. Wah, I felt wah. like the entities in it had no purpose. And I felt like they really should. And they, plugged in Lin Shay as ways of member berries and the two dudes didn't really have much of a role in it that were really kind of I feel like Lin Shay and those two guys kind of helped carry the film the yes. other films and they're them not being in this film as much really affected the quality of it um I hope they stop here like I I don't think we needed this film. I agree with Rob that it didn't really tie up in a bow nicely what it could have tied up in a bow. Right. And I think it just got really dumb. It's a shame. Yeah, that's yeah. a... Like, because even if it was just another okay Insidious movie, I would have been fine with that. That just sounds disappointing. Yeah, like... I would probably give it two and a half to three stars in the sense that it was watchable right? because it has a budget and you can follow along with the plot. But was I invested and overly cared what happened to the Lamberts? No, I didn't. Hmm. Did I feel like the story was didn't make sense at points? Like I could give some big spoilers that if you had seen it, 
and maybe we're doing a spoiler section, we would talk about one of the biggest things that didn't make fucking sense in this movie at all. But I won't because there's obviously people that still need to watch it. Um, yeah, it's a shame. I I really had higher expectations than what came out with this movie, but that's what happens, right? Sometimes, yeah. sometimes, you know, by the time you get to the fifth installment in a, in a series, you know, I will say it kept to the original theme. It's just it really needed those other characters to carry it. Right. And even then, that would just make it slightly better. <laughs> right. Right. So. All right. Well, good to know. Yeah, those are. So that's our 2023 watches for now. Uh, we will be back with more. Hopefully, we'll next time we chat will be after we've seen the uh, the last voyage of the Dem- Demeter. Yeah, and hopefully talk to me and Meg too. And yeah, yeah. So we'll have some more theatrical releases to bring to the table. Um, I'll jump into my older movies quick. Um, I watched Deliverance finally from 1972. Yay. I did enjoy it. I did not find the sexual assault scene as shocking as oh, I no. think because women are raped in movies all the time, all the time. And I think the shocking thing about this is a white male was a victim in 1972, to be honest. Yes. Right. And men didn't want to see themselves in that role as being a victim. That's what right. I think. Well, shocked. And I think it was just shocking because it's, uh, I think, you know, one of the earlier times of seeing someone like that violated. Like a of a male man. Violated. Women had been yeah. raped on scene. Oh, on film, yeah. Right. You know what I mean? A male violated like that. Right. And still, we don't see that that much. And that's why I think people were shocked. They're like, what? I'm the one that does the raping. What do you mean it can happen to me? Right. <laughs> kind of how i felt it was um but acting wise incredible very very good acting yeah. F- the four main characters a fucking dialogue you know fucking chef kiss incredible um thought it moved pretty quick did enjoy the film for what it was um good little survival you know back i, I didn't find it as scary as I think other people put it out to be, but I think it's a good survival flick. I definitely glad yeah. I finally watched it. Yeah, like um, it and the filming for 1972, fuck my chef's kiss on that one too. Great. wild, like out in the, in the wild shots kind of thing, you know, some great camera yeah. work. And I was going to say definitely a good uh, survival. It definitely fits in the survival yes. horror aspect of it. Very much so. Very much so. Uh, well, I had to watch the stand for another podcast that I'm on and uh, fuck uh, that's a long mini series. Um, like, Fox, the fact that you had to watch that and so many other films, like, oh my god, yeah, that was a lot. Yeah, it was the end, never-ending podcast. I I did enjoy the stand, but I enjoyed the first half more. I found when it got to like the uh, Melrose nine zero two one zero people fucking other people, and then this demon guy is taken over here, and Las Vegas is now the city of sin, and these other people need to take down him. I preferred it more when they couldn't figure out what the virus was and everyone was dying, um, except for a few select people that were immune. I found that more interesting. Overall, though, very good mini miniseries, <laughs> very entertaining. Yeah, I I saw this. I watched every episode with my mother the night it was airing on TV, and I had never watched or never read the book at that time. Um, and it does a pretty good job of covering the book. Like I I do enjoy the miniseries, but it's been so long since I've seen it. I don't know if I would, if I can agree with you or not on like the first part being better than the second half because I yeah. do have parts of the second half in my head. But I have a feeling I probably would agree rewatching it now. But it's definitely very right. dated, right? Very of its time with a lot of the stuff. But it, yeah, like definitely for made for TV, pretty. You know what? Epic. And good stars in it. Like it was Gary yeah. Sinise is great in it. You know, like there's some really good actors in it, and I enjoyed it for what it was. But, you know, it was long. It yeah. was long. I would not rewatch it anytime soon. No, but I would say if you ever rewatched it, I'd say rewatch it like it was meant, like like it was done on TV, where it's like broken into yeah. f- uh, four hour and a half parts. De- I would definitely, if I was to rewatch it again, that is exactly how I would rewatch it, to be yeah. honest with you. <laughs> yeah. That's the, be- that's the best way to do it, I because watching it like I did like back then, that's the easiest way. Um, but yeah, so I guess I can talk about the three. I brought three older ones just because I figured I'd go through them fairly quickly. Um, but two of these were from Tubi Tuesday. Um, one of them uh, was back before Erica and the boys moved in. Erica and I did our virtual date night, and we watched The Lost Vlog of Ruby Reel, a 2020 found footage film that's only about 60 minutes long. So a nice, simple movie because we had a 
short night that night to watch films. But uh, let me pull up the synopsis real fast. Uh, so three social media influencers venture out into the woods to debunk a trending myth only to find themselves lost and delirious in an ab- abnormal forest. So where this is social media influencers, it's not like the influencers like such as No Filter. This is more like vloggers, which I can tolerate them more. But mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, this was very just short, sweet, but uh, very. It started off very interesting. Like the three were just really good friends walking through. Like and then all of a sudden, like it was like they got stuck in time. Like they went or like they heard about this myth about this tree. If they walked around a certain way, they're on the tree. Next thing you know, they'd appear and like not seem worse for wear. But then all of a sudden, they realize that there is no exit from the woods. Like it just keeps looping and looping and looping. Kind of gave me that Blair Witch 2016 vibe where, yeah, once you were in the woods, there was no escaping it. And, yeah, it kind of had this very intriguing story behind it. And by the third act, it kind of fell apart a bit, but we still enjoyed our time with it. So I'd say it was on Tubi. I think it was one of the ones that was leaving Tubi. So we were like, hey, it's found footage. It's leaving soon. Let's just check it out. And, yeah, it wasn't bad. Uh, All right. All right. The other one that I watched was this one I watched on my own, but uh, this one was Allison's birthday from 1981. I believe you folk told horror. me. Yeah, you told me it was on the folk horror documentary mm-hmm. that I still yes. have not watched. Oh, dude, that's a good doc. I know. It just yeah, wasn't it like it's like a three hour doc, so I just need to carve out some time for it. But um, yeah, I enjoyed this. I definitely a product of its time of the 80s cult type horror films. Uh, but very fun, uh, very intriguing. Um, saw where it was going the entire time because obviously, like, nothing mind blowing there. But it is definitely a very good folk horror movie that I would recommend people search it out, especially if they watch the documentary and this movie looked interesting to them. Definitely worth a watch. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and then the next one was uh, the last Tubi Tuesday movie we watched, and it was called Fake Blood from 2017. Mm. Uh, this one is a faux documentary style uh, and it's uh 81 minute runtime uh the tagline getting the shot without getting shot rob, <laughs> i like it yeah it's got kind of like a bit of humor to this one but uh rob grant and mike kovac receive a disturbing fan video inspired by their previous horror movie monami motivating them to investigate the responsibility of filmmakers and portraying violence in movies in their pursuit of the truth they are unwittingly introduced to the real world of violent criminals and their victims so, yeah, they, these guys do very, very, very low-budget, schlocky horror films. And, yep, yeah, fan sends them a video of, like, this is how I would dispose of a body and blah, blah, blah. And it freaked them out. So they're like, shit, are we really influencing people on this? Oh, boy, let's look into this and how we should do our next movie. Should we show more violence to kind of scare people away from doing this type of stuff? Or should we cut out the violence? So let's talk to people and some professionals and... Yeah, they just kind of go down this rabbit hole and they end up talking to like a convicted uh, murderer who got out and uh. they meet up with him and start just talking b- about his story. And they find out like the story he told was not exactly the full truth. And they start one guy starts digging into it deeper than he should be. And it starts just kind of collapsing from there. And uh, but I found it to be very intriguing, very uh, entertaining and uh, definitely kind of a good look into, you know, does our horror movies and stuff like that influencing this type of shit in real life? And yeah, obviously it probably does with some crazed individuals, mm-hmm. but like, yeah, very interesting look in this and yeah, just a very entertaining movie all around. I really enjoyed it. Well, back in the day, since you're sitting where we used to record, when you and I first started doing this podcast, we talked about life of influencing horror and horror influencing society, right? Yep. So it's a valid question. Yeah. And there are people that have committed murders that have said they were inspired or their favorite films were horror films. And it's not to say that just because you watch a horror movie, you're going to go out and commit a violent act. Uh, just like playing violent video games doesn't make people go and shoot up places. Exactly. But to someone who's already unstable and has other many, many factors, does it add to it? Yet again, I would never say that's the trigger, but does it add to it? It's an interesting discussion. And where does the responsibility lie? Exactly. And yeah, like the way that it's moved, like obviously there were some funny parts to it just because like it was kind of a dark comedy in a way, but 
Yeah. yeah. Like, I found this to be a very interesting movie that is very worthwhile. And I don't know if I said, but it is 2017 release. Awesome. Well, I'm I'm glad you brought it to the table, and I think it brings up a good conversational piece, to be honest. Oh yeah. Um, about you know horror and timid, in, in, um horror affecting real life and real life affecting horror. I think it's, you know, if anyone's interested, you could go back to our early episodes and hear Scott and I go on about that and our opinions on it. Um, we did talk about that stuff for a long time. We used to do themes and stuff like that, uh, before we kind of just changed the gears a little bit. Um. We just like to keep it spicy here on Friday Nightmares. And uh, you can do that when you're an OG. So, um, you know, three and a half years in. So crazy to think, think, right? So we're ripping off our friends podcast, Dummies of Horror, our out of the dark segment. So kind of as some of you know, who've been with us from the beginning, we flirted back and forth with taking out different segments and putting them in. So some consistency that we will always have is our 2023 watches our older watches and then if we have something else to talk about we will um if we don't then we won't but today today we have something to talk about uh so with the motivation of forcing erica to watch quicksand (laughs) scott because i knew scott would find it funny i knew scott would be like these people are fucking stupid because we watched so many movies like remember the one about the young lady that was that was confined to the wheelchair with the dog oh god right (laughs) Right? Like, we've watched so many dumb fucking movies, Scott and I, over the years, that we sometimes will refer things to each other. Well, I will be like, Scott, you gotta watch this. This is so fucking stupid. You really gotta watch this so we can talk about it. And I said, okay, if you had to choose between going on a trip with the couple from the movie Outback 2020, which is the couple that gets lost in the Australian wilderness. Which everybody should remember our fun conversations about that movie. Yes, especially with Tim and Daniel, because we Mm -hmm. covered it with them as well. Uh, for from the dummies of horror podcast and you know quicksand who would you rather go with he's like oh fuck heather why would you make me choose i'm like what if we had a versus so tim we are fucking ripping this shit off like aew's fucking stupid skits they're doing right now mm-hmm. and that they ripped off from wwe so we are having a battle now we're not gonna do the dragged out intro that Tim Davis does and the fight thing and this and that because well we're not that great. That you for quality like that you go to dummies of horror. Exactly. For down to the basics asylum level, <laughs> you come here. <laughs> Perfect description. We are basically asylum to his high budget. So um I'm gonna give a quick synopsis of each film unless you want to, Scott. Um, I don't have my phone right, right up, but I mean, you can do it if you want. And you can add to it if you want. So basically, Outback is a movie about a couple. They are, the guy proposes to the chick on the plane. She says no. They're on this trip to Australia. They've been together since high school. They land in Australia, and they have this awkwardness that they're going to go and do all these things. They go to a beach. Some crazy, stupid, dumb tourist shit happens to them there. They decide they want to go visit these museums, and they're going to drive through the outback to get there. Quicksand is basically this married couple that is on the verge of getting divorced. They have two children. Uh, No, I haven't told anyone that they're on the verge of getting divorced yet. She's a doctor, and he's... What the fuck does he do again? I don't know. He does something. I don't even remember. It's not important. I don't know. He's an engineer. We'll say he's a fucking engineer. And they go to Columbia. He he worked in the hospital with her. Did he work in the hospital, too? Okay, so he works in the hospital, too. I guess he's also a doctor. We're all doctors here. So she comes back to Columbia to do some kind of doctor aid shit. He goes with her. Um, their marriage is falling apart. They're basically on the verge of getting divorced. They're working through to get make that happen. He, I guess they used to hike a lot as a couple. She finds out he wants to go on this hike. He says that she probably wouldn't like it. It's off the beaten path. They're told not to go. They go anyway. Some dude tries to steal their car when they're coming back to it. There's a conflict. They run away and they run into quicksand. So I've set up the stage for both. <laughs> films that's the short version unless you want to add anything sky well, i feel I like was that's gonna, the basic bitch yeah that's pretty much the synopsis but i was gonna say with quicksand they didn't they actually did avoid going to that area because though they were arguing with the fucking mm. hotel steward but they did end up avoiding it because they're like okay yep people are saying don't go here don't let's not go here but because okay. that guy robbed them and pulled a gun on them they ended up running and accidentally ran to that area Okay, that's what happened. Thank you for providing that clarity because I was just like, yeah, yeah, everyone's stupid. So like they're so. they're stupid, but like at least they originally knew better. This kind of happened by happenstance. 
So we'll go through the questions and Scott and I are going to use examples from the films to justify who we would rather go on a vacation with. So we have been forced that we have to travel with one of these couples on this exact situation they're on because these are both vacation scenarios with very dumb, dumb people that make very dumb, dumb decisions. So I said to Scott, he's like, well, I don't want to go with either. I'm like, that's not an option. (laughs) In order to play this game, we have to choose. So we're going to start with the first question. Who, in your opinion, is the least prepared out of these two couples? All right. I I didn't look at these questions until I pulled up the Google Sheets to update it earlier today. So it just kind of like we obviously we came up with them, but I didn't Mm -hmm. think about it or look at it till then till now. But automatically, I do have to say who is the least prepared. And that is definitely the couple from Outback Mm. Quicksand. They even though they're quote unquote experienced hikers, they do come prepared with snacks, some water, stuff like that. However, the fucking couple from Outback go on a 32 hour drive to the Outback Mm -hmm. and all they end up doing is buying like a bag of jerky uh was it two bottles of water and like one candy Mm -hmm. bar or something no not Mm -hmm. a case of water or anything like that just in case of a situation where you could get stranded no no they go there with like literally no camping gear no nothing that just dumb decision being like nothing to just like even in the car they could have used they didn't have any of that survival tool stuff so that yeah I'll so i just want to say that i yeah i 110 percent agree with you scott so the outback people first of all the, the thing that saved the quicksand people for this for me is they at least left a note about where they were going mm-hmm. They did yes. let somebody know. So they leave a note so their friend knows that they are heading off on this hike in the general area where they are. I agree that they had appropriate clothing on for the hike, appropriate footwear, and for what they intended on going for, they brought the supplies for. Yeah. The couple in Outback stopped by a variety store, bought one bottle of fucking water, a granola bar, beef jerky, or whatever it is. The tendon was like, oh, you want to drive through the Outback? That's kind of dangerous. And they were like, oh, do 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 okay. Like, it was the dumbest shit I have ever seen. You're going to be in the car. Like, the GPS says over a thousand kilometers. Yeah. So kilometers is what's used in Australia. And Rob's like, well, that's the problem. It's not in miles. So... For Americans, that's over 500 miles. That's a lot of fucking driving. Yeah. Okay. I had more snacks prepared. I went to the water park on Friday. I packed a cooler with three big jugs of water. I packed snacks. We were going to a water park that offered food. Right. And I still packed that. Yeah. For 45 minutes away. So this outback couple fucking stupid so definitely the least prepared i'm glad we agree on that choices to get them in the situation in the first place okay this this is hard because they both made really stupid choices (laughs) yes absolutely um okay so let's see who made the worst choices to get them in the situation in the first place okay so um, i know this one is almost tied for me because all right, I'll kind of just talk it out. But uh, worst choices, Outback, these, this couple decided, hey, we're going to Australia and visiting all these beaches and stuff like that. And then on a whim, decided to drive to the fucking Outback, which Tim Davis and Daniel Luffy from Horror, uh, Dummies of Horror, who live in Australia, say, that is a dumb fucking idea. You don't want to mm-hmm. do that. That mm-hmm. That is a terrible, terrible idea. He's like, we live here. That's a terrible idea. And so right there, that's a dumb decision. And then going out there like they did. Um, but however, quicksand people, while yes, they didn't, they did, uh, didn't ignore the warnings, even though they did argue with the people at first, they did avoid the trail, but then were forced on that trail when they were running in fear. However, mm-hmm. this is where worst choices to get them in the situation in the first place, when the girl or woman falls into the quicksand 
uh, well, first, like I was bitching about earlier in the uh, when I talked about this movie and when I first watched it, was her flailing about and sinking deeper into the quicksand. But the part I left out, because I wanted to bring it up for this argument here, is the fact that the guy goes and grabs like a tiny little twig to reach for her and realizes, oh, mm-hmm. I can't reach her. Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to jump in the quicksand with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. for me, the couple from quicksand wins the worst choices to get in the situation in the first place because that could have been easily avoided, but you decided willingly to jump feet first into the fucking quicksand. Agreed. And I'm going to rewind on that one. Instead of just letting the guy break into your car and take whatever he wanted and wait till he leaves, you decide to confront him. Yes, that too. In the middle of Colombia. Yeah. I feel like that is, and I get that he spoke Spanish, so maybe he felt like he could de-escalate, but he didn't have a gun. He didn't even have a knife on him. Did he? I don't recall a knife Mm -hmm. being used. Oh, so I guess I weren't that prepared, because if I was walking in those fucking jungle, I'd be having a fucking knife on me, let me tell you that much. Yeah, I'll say, as far um, as I can remember, there was no knife. So, yeah, uh, you wouldn't have been in the situation in the first place if you hadn't done those things. Then jumping into the quicksand because you think that's going to save your wife or ex-wife, or soon-to-be ex-wife, I agree. But I'm going to come back with the back attack on the Outback Capital. Well, they're driving. <laughs> They're on a paved road, okay? They're on a paved road. The GPS tells them to turn down this dirt road. That's like, looks like sometimes people drive on it, but it also doesn't look like many people drive on it. And they keep going. Yeah. Then he turns again onto an even more dirt road. And I can, I both Scott and I have gone up north to places that have dirt roads. Yes. But it's never so fucking isolated that it's in the middle of a desert. <laughs> We're not like a Jay-Z video where we're just swinging our car around constantly trying to be funny or like cool. So they stop, they leave the car, and they walk in the dark to a mountain or a hill that they climb up. And the whole time I'm like, why are you doing that? Why not just try to turn around the way you came? Try to call somebody? Call whatever the version of CC. CC CAA is, which is like Canadian Automobile Club or American Automobile Club. I'm sure there's got to be something in Australia. Why would you get out of your car in the heat, walk that far away, and it's getting dark and they don't even turn around? They just keep going. Good point. Good point. <sighs> so I agree. This this should be a tie. Um, but I'm going to just, just because I'm going to go with Outback. Because as dumb as it was to jump in the quicksand... I can understand in panicking in the heat of the moment doing that. Because if I saw you drowning in quicksand and I panicked, maybe I would, you know, grab onto something and reach out for you and fall in. But yeah, that's different. You would right? reach for trying to help. No, that, this is where I will say, like, yeah. I'm, still, I'm still sticking yeah. with the quicksand because the guy yeah. where, yes, the couple in Outback are idiots and clueless to what they're doing. This guy knows what quicksand is. And then literally just goes okay i'm just gonna jump in it no one like no i'm like for me i i gotta stick with quicksand you're gonna quit i'm gonna okay i'm gonna go without back um simply for the dirt road run around and the, i'm gonna leave my car and walk super far i feel as though you were thinking about it and that for some reason you couldn't you couldn't i don't know you you couldn't like you panicked so i'm gonna go with that Right. Um, so, yeah. So our next question. So so Outback is two for me. You are one for Outback, one for Quickstand, right? Yep. Okay. So keep score for you in case uh, I all right. this track. You want to write it down? I don't have anything to write with, but I oh, will. Oh, will you remember? My, no, yeah, I'll put it in my notebook here on my phone. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, you can go ahead with the next question. All right. If you're ready. Yep. Okay. Um, who is the worst couple? Now, this one I wanted to ask, uh, worst couple as in who can you just not stand? Would you not be able to stand being around? Yeah, like like basically you're on vacation with them. So who is the couple that you would, that you think is the worst couple? Like, Hmm. um, this one, at least because in my eyes, when I'm watching these movies, I feel like I am on the vacation with these characters is how I'm looking at it. Like just how I feel when I'm watching the movies. 
And yeah, they're both people I would never want to spend any quality time with. But I think, I think I would choose Quicksand as the worst couple for me. Because they are nonstop bickering and just downright mean to each other and just nasty to each other for like 90% of the movie. Mm -hmm. And and Mm -hmm. where, yes, the other couple is from Outback. The boyfriend is mad, but not pissed off to the point where they're bickering all the time. Like the girlfriend's still trying to be like, hey, you know, I just want to get past this. Let's go back to how things were. Like, you know, it's mm-hmm, not like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not like a completely broken relationship where the divorced one is. And it's just like, I think I would rather while you're both idiots, both couples, of both you couples are idiots. I think I would rather sit in the car with the people from Outback than sit in the car with the awkwardness of these two bickering from quicksand. So quicksand gets my vote on this one. I would agree with you 110 percent. I think that the couple from Outback even though young and immature, um, I do feel like he cares about her and she cares yes. about him. And I think I can I can chalk up their conflicts to immaturity and age. They're supposed to be like 22, 23 years old. So I can I can put them not being able to communicate at their age where the people in quicksand are adults. Full yes. grown, with like kids. close to forty, educated individuals that could not communicate to save their lives. Yeah, and I think to me that is what I find stands out as the worst couple: their inability to have any kind of problem solving, any kind of like. And she is just so. I find her worse than him. Yeah, I, I did. The, I felt the same way. I found They're her terrible, but sufferable. She, yeah. Um, for adults, at least with the the young adults, like the young ones, I'm like, I just feel like you're not mature enough yet. Yeah, exactly. I cared about, and one alt made an ultimate sacrifice for the other. Yeah. So I will give that right. Um. So yeah, we're we're. So I am. I am Outback. So two for Outback for me, I believe, because I said who made the worst choices. Both were Outback. Yep. And worst couple, I said um, Quicksand. Quicksand. So. Yeah, but I am two for Quicksand and one for Outback so far. All right. And next one. Next question. Who has the better survival skills? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I know. Uh, I think unless you can convince me otherwise i think the couple from outback has better survival skills in my eyes because um while this is an ongoing joke with us whenever we watch the movie they run out of water and the man instantly starts drinking his own pee which he didn't need to do so quickly but Mm -hmm. he he thought ahead and was like okay this we can do this we can survive off of this when they were lost and the girl the girlfriend got stung by the scorpion and was out cold. He made an SOS sign trying to get uh, attention from people flying above. And then Mm -hmm. also, even in his delirious state with all the heat beaten down on him and he's like losing his damn mind, he grabs a stick and actually makes a trail as he walks off trying to find help. Yes. Where the couple in quicksand, like I brought up earlier, the dude just jumps into the quicksand. The girl flails in the quicksand and starts going Mm -hmm. deeper instead of trying to, like, stay calm and Mm -hmm. think things through. They find a, miraculously seem to find a book bag full of, like, some supplies that they kind of use and then just throw away when it had all the survival stuff in it. Um, And there's just no working together with these two at all. None. It, it just was dumb decisions left and right with that couple. All dumb. Yeah. All dumb, dumb. I could not agree more. I don't know what world we live in where we actually think someone could kill a snake and then use it as a lasso. Yeah. Like, Fucking I don't snake know lasso. Why? <laughs> who wrote that in. And the inability to, like, and what made me more angry about Outback is that they lived. Both of them. There is no fucking way. I mean, quicksand. Sorry, quicksand. Quicksand. They both lived. With being bitten by a snake, poisonous snake, quote unquote, he, he would be alive multiple times. There is no fucking way he would be alive. 
and the ant thing and the and her them just sitting there and her then running and the only reason they survived is not because of them their buddy who got arrested who somehow got out of jail alerted people to where they were exactly or she would have died neither one of them were responsible for their survival at least in quicksand or sorry, sorry, at least in outback dude i agree did the sos thing and i think he knew he was going to die so he thought if she finds me then she can i will drink this fluid because if she finds me she can have it and we gotta remember he's delirious he's dehydrated he's fucked up i get yeah. in that they've been in this situation for an extended period of time I, watching that movie, I could forgive that piece. I found that getting into that situation, I thought the Outback people were dumber and less prepared. But I feel like they worked better with what they had. Yes. Which they doesn't actually, say much. They, but actually, <laughs> they actually tried. <laughs> they actually tried. So I'm at quicksand for this. So for me, it's two for Outback and two for quicksand. So I'm tied. My tiebreaker is coming. So you chose uh, quicksand has better survival skills? Oh, no. I chose Outback has better. Never mind. I'm not tied. Outback has better survival skills. So Outback has three. Yep. Okay. That's what I got you as. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Which outcome is the most realistic? Uh, <laughs> I already kind of showed my hand on that one and how I feel, but. Yep. And I was going to say, and you already know how I feel. So it's like uh, right off the bat, which outcome is more realistic? Outback. Because, yeah, the guy dies from drinking like from poisoning himself basically with drinking the ton of washer fluid and the girl the girlfriend is basically just out on falls out of the car side of the road and basically on her deathbed almost dead when a ranger finds her and rescues yeah. her where because they saw the SOS sign yes where in right. quicksand yes they, they somehow both survive even the go even though the guy was basically dead floating in the quicksand like he was dying she would be like honey yeah i'm here and like how did the guy how did their friend like he they gave a rough note of where they were yes they let people let him know where he was going but how did the guy find them with all like the ambulances and everything and how did they go so quickly back to the dude and get him out of the quicksand like right. how did like to me I thought is she dying and this is her hallucination <laughs> right because that would make sense to me and that's how I've chosen to think the movie ends but that's not what was presented so Outback gets this award as well because it's more realistic so that for me is four for Outback one for their vacation win yeah by you cut out on my end so you might want to repeat that just in case so my final score was four for Outback, one for Quicksand, which means <laughs> as unprepared as the Outback couple was and them making the really shitty choices, I still think they are more tolerable to be with and deal with than these Quicksand people. I'd rather die with Outback than put up with Quicksand. Right. I would just push myself under the Quicksand <laughs> right. and hope the suffocation <laughs> came quick. I would jump in head first in the quicksand. Yes. And just have my feet dangling and be like, <laughs> yes. let's end this fucking quick so I don't have to listen to this chick anymore. But, and this guy fight because they're fucking painful. Uh, but yeah, so for my score, it is three for Outback and two for quicksand. So, yep, just like you, the Outback couple is who I'd rather vacation with. I would He's, definitely be. Yeah. I, I would happily chug piss with that guy any day compared to dealing you know, with couple. If, if Erica, if you had to do that for Erica, you would. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. And you would rather her live than you die. Exactly. And that's the heroic thing. Let's make this clear. Both couples are dumb. But if in this impossible decision that we had to make, Scott and I are going on the outback. Yep. <laughs> and that's what we're doing. Tim Davis, so, Luffy, you guys can be our uh, guides. Here we go. Quicksand's even worse, but still Rob's number one, 2023. Go Rob. Thank you for supporting <laughs> horror. So thank you for listening to our podcast. We should be back to more of a regular schedule moving forward. Yeah. Um, and then I'll be going away. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so our schedule will be all sorts of <laughs> flippy floppy again. So if for some reason we're not consistent, it's not because, you know, we're not podcasting anymore. It's just lives are changing and things are developing as we go. So we may be a once a month, twice a month show, depending on the on the month. Um, so but we will always bring the 2023s in a mixed bag of it. 
our thoughts on it. Hopefully some indies that you haven't heard of, some Tubi, some Netflix. I don't know if Prime ever starts releasing anything again. And right. the studies and, and theatrical releases. We will definitely be doing our best to provide a variety and cautions and warnings about things you should avoid. Yep, we will do the dirty work for you so you don't have to. We're in, and we definitely like dirty work. Yeah, we do. Yeah, high we five, do. High five, high five. <laughs> high five, high five. Uh, but you can find us on the Legion Podcast Network. We are proud members of the Legion Podcast Network. We are underneath the Kill the Cast feed. Uh, we also, Legion has a Patreon. So if for some reason you haven't joined it, uh, there are video giveaways, or sorry, not video giveaways. Um, what are they called? Digital code giveaways. Thank you. Digital code giveaways um, and other bonus episodes from some great content creators. And if you haven't joined Legion Patreon yet. You know, it's been so long. I know there's something I'm supposed to say here. What? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Join us. Join us today and come on the Outback trip with us. Watch Scotty drink his pee pee. (laughs) (laughs) And antifreeze. And me pack one granola bar and a bottle of water to survive me the entire walk. But at least in the other case, we just be drowning in the quicksand head first. Yep. (laughs) Be begging for the snake to come bite us. Like, no, please, take me. Take me, please. I'll, 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 I'll save you, snake, so you can bite me. Honestly, the snake's like, fuck this shit. Like, in the real version, the snake would be like, these people are fucking nuts. Yep, I'm out. It <laughs> goes away. <laughs> and the best, it was like, the snake's by its nest. Okay, I'm pretty sure reptiles don't hang around and raise their babies, lady. I'm pretty sure that's not how it works in the wildlife. I, I'm pretty sure alligators and those guys, don't they just have their babies and they, like, fend for themselves? Like, I don't uh, think reptiles raise their children, do they? They're not like bears or other mammals. No, I'll say, at least I know with turtles, turtles have their eggs and then they just wander off and the turtles hatch and the babies have to find their way out and if the babies make it they make it yeah i believe that's how it goes i could be wrong but so i'm pretty sure this mama snake ain't all of a sudden fucking protective of its eggs yeah and also would probably have an egg in the quicksand no like what the fuck (laughs) and the ants are coming for them honestly you know why those wildlife was coming for them because they went shut the fuck up they were like like, oh my god you you just die already we're tired of you too like we let this other guy die of like dehydration but with you we're just gonna fucking up the case because we can't handle your fucking yabbering anymore holy shit shit. we're sick of your shit like a new disney movie the disney animals fight back and they just like take care of the situation and (laughs) (laughs) that'd be the best Make sure. And there's even a snake in Outback randomly, the snake's in the fucking car. Oh, yep. But he's just trying to open the ring. I mean, to be fair, he did leave the door open. Yeah, like, there was a little more of a reasoning there, but... Yes, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed it. As I said, we we will do Out of the Dark when we have something to talk about. Um, that was an interesting conversation. Other episodes might be a little bit shorter. So until next time, Scotty, do you have any um, parting words for our dear listeners? Yes, until next time, you know... Always keep a bottle of piss handy because you never know <laughs> when you just may be thirsty. All right. Some dreams. See ya. Bye.